So for today's character, we're going to be then trying out Paul. Now Paul has several knowledge checks that you got to be careful of when you're fighting against him. So for starters, Death Fist. Death Fist is one of his big going moves that he would like to use against you. Mostly at tip range, but they will try using it up close if possible. If you do get caught by this move, it does tremendous amounts of damage and it has tremendous amounts of knockback, especially in heat. So while in heat, you're going to better believe that if it's a wall near like... I guess 7, 8, maybe 10 meters away, you're still gonna probably get wall splatter anyways by the Death Fist. Now, Death Fist has a weakness, and the fact that is, is that it's minus 17. So, since it's minus 17, you can still launch the pull, but not many characters have this ability to do so. In the case of Yoshimitsu, at this range, I can't even perform the, the down forward 2 to launch the pull. Now, Death Fist can be beaten by a 17 frame launch punish, but it has to be quick enough to be done on execution to then catch the pull off guard. This is the only way you can do so with Yoshimitsu, with characters that are a little easier to do a particular launch, like in the case of Horang. Horang has back 3, they can then definitely reach the Death Fist. As you can see, that can definitely reach. Or in the case of Lars, it can be the forward back to one that can also reach against the Death Fist. Now the issue is, is that if the Paul decides to use Death Fist at a tip range, this would whiff. So your best choices in beating the Death Fist at tip range is to attempt to sidestep the move. And then punish accordingly. Now, it's best to sidestep the move to the left side. The right side can also be done, but it has a bit of the means of clipping you from the sidestep right. Now, for the next move in question, it will be the Demo Man from Paul. This move is outrageously strong for what it is. It's three hits. It's guaranteed on the first hit on a clean hit that then follows up into the last two hits. He can go for a just frame version for the last hit to deal an extra bit of damage against you, but auto pauls don't really go for it just for the sake of not messing out the demo man inputs. And then the fact that it also gives him a wall splash, so he can even go for even bigger damage from there as well. Now, of course, the biggest means to beat it is simply blocking it. If you block it, it is minus 31, so you have enough time to then go for one of your biggest launch punishes against the Paul. But let's say, for example, that you can't manage to then detect when the Paul is going to go for the Demo Man. If you can't tell whether or not the Demo Man is going to be coming out, it's best to just simply just backstep as fast as possible so that you don't get hit by the Demo Man. And if not, if you get lucky, you might even Korean backdash into a crouch since Korean backdashing puts you in a crouching state at certain intervals, you could end up blocking the Demo Man. But at a distance, if you do manage to then create enough space, you can then get away from the Demo Man in time until the last two hits then will proc to then blocking the move being minus 17, you can still launch the Paul at this particular moment. You also can't sidestep either of the two sides from Demo Man. So this is why this move is quite dangerous. You have to either think that it's going to go for the Demo Man so that you can then block it for a big launch punish, or try to create enough space by pivoting backwards so that that way you don't get hit by the Demo Man. Of course, if you're playing Yoshimitsu, you can just get away by simply back three and back four, so you don't have to worry about the Demo Man. That is the one privilege that a lot of Yoshimitsu mains have. And if you're playing a character that has the definitely good evasiveness that has a lot of low crush moves in their kit, which not many characters have anyways. In this case, just think about it this way, if you have a hop kick, just use that against the Paul if you think you're about to use the Demo Man at that exact time. Now for the next move that you gotta be wary of is Paul's 442 into the just frame 1. Now, a lot of Paul's love to do this at a certain tip range, so let's say if you're like right here. If they get in with the 442, that's the most likely hood that they're gonna be using the just frame right afterwards to catch you off guard, since it's quite quick. But the move is duckable. So if that happens, you just have to duck immediately and then punish accordingly, depending on how you want to go about it with your character. Now the issue is, is that they can decide to mix you up with that particular same string. From the first hit, they can decide to not go into the just frame and follow up into the more slower one version of the attack that you can't duck. 
but you can sidestep it if you want to. If you're playing Yoshimitsu, you can try flashing. And if you have a parry move with your character, you can do that as well. For the next move, it will be another type of string that pulls up to use, especially when you have low health. They'll try to do this. If the Paul decides to go for the down one, and you get hit by the down one, the follow up kick can still be blocked. But that's only if the first hit wasn't from a counter hit. If it's from a counter hit, the follow up kick will be connected. Of course, if you end up blocking the first hit, you can low parry the low kick instead. But I would just advise to simply just block the second hit instead. That way you can then launch punish the Paul for a bigger punish. Now the Paul does have a different follow up string from the down one. Now if you do end up blocking the first hit, the second hit can be sized up to the right. To the left you cannot because it can clip you. But if you're perfect at doing so then you can still get away from it. But if you attempt to sidewalk to the left, that still somehow clips you. I don't know why, it just does. The one thing that I can say is that you can punish this move with one of your 15 frame punishes. Or in the case, a 17 frame punish. Reason why is that the move is when it's 17. The one thing you'll have to be careful of though is that the pole can not charge up this move. If it's fully charged, it is plus 9 on block, so you can't really disrespect the pull right afterwards once this happens. But because of the charge up, you can get around the pull from this. So if you do see the pull doing this, and if you have quick reactions, you can get around the pull by side walking him, to then launch punishing the pull right afterwards. Now the next move is another move that does leave Paul at a plus frame. Now, even though the move is plus 5 on block, if you do manage to duck the move, you can't punish it. And it's sidesteppable as well. So it's a bit linear. Now, this move in particular was annoying for me as well. I would, The one that's coming up now is the... I think what it's actually called, the actual stance. The Kumarant step or something like that. When he does this. When he goes into that weird uh, wave step that he does. And he goes into the 2-1. The last hit can be still ducked. This was one of the moves that I did not know how to beat before. And now that I had a little bit of practice looking at the characters that I wanted to main during my soul searching. I figured out that the move can be ducked and beaten this way. Now, you can decide to sidewalk the first hit of the move, but the second hit has outrageous amounts of tracking, so even if you do sidewalk it on the first hit, the second hit can still land. As you can see. This works against you at both sides, so you can't really do anything against the foe when this happens. The only thing you can attempt is that if you do sidewalk, immediately step the first hit, and then duck the last hit. But then that defeats the purpose of even attempting to sidewalk the move to try to get around the Paul. So you might as well just take in the first hit, block it, and then duck on the second hit. Now the next move is a move that a lot of players don't know that this is actually quite safe. Now the Potter Crush is, is elusively safe on block. It looks like it's a move that should be punished, but it's not. It's not like his other moves that he has in his kit. For example, he has a shoulder tackle with down 1 plus 2. Now this move is quite minus, it's actually minus 16, so if he does this against you, you can then launch punish the Paul. And not many players know that. But when it comes to this move in particular, people would immediately think that this is another move that you can launch punish, and you can't. But what players forget is that it's a high, so you can actually duck the Potter Crush. Think of it like Victor's uh, back 1 plus 2, it's similar in that way. And it has outrageous amounts of tracking. Now you can beat it by sidewalking to the right side, but you gotta do it immediately. You got to basically pull reactively sidewalk to the right side to beat it. This is the only way you can manage to beat the move. If you do it right as he already commenced on doing the power crush, then you won't be able to step, it just tracks you. But if you do it at the very beginning as if you 
kind of predicted he was going to use it, then you can actually sidestep it to the right side. Now for the last move that I'll be demonstrating is his forward 1 plus 4. Now this move is minus 14, you can punish it with a 13 frame or 14 frame or anything that's at least below a 14 frame to then punish the pole accordingly. The one issue with this move is that you can't set this move, you will get hit by the move. So it basically tracks you. Even if you attempt to sidewalk it at the right frames, you can still get hit by the initial move. So your best bet is to simply just make a read, guess that the, the Paul is going to use the 4 1 plus 4, and then just simply block it. Once you block it, then you can go ahead and punish the Paul accordingly. And that's about it. I think I covered everything that the beginner should then learn when it comes to Paul, and then learning how to punish accordingly against the Paul. If you play a particular character that I have not showcased, that how you can beat the Paul with, like how I showed in the beginning with Lars and then of course with uh, Horang, then again, just test out your character's moves, see exactly how you can beat some, some of the moves that he has in his kit, and then that's it. Uh, hopefully that your journey against Pauls would go swimmingly. So without further ado, thank you for watching the video, give the video a like if you enjoyed it, dislike if you didn't, subscribe to see more of my shit, and then stay tuned for more.